What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. Alright guys, so it's time for us to jump back into our Ultimate Marvel reading order. And guys, today we are going to cover Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 3. Now guys, this book right here gives us the return of Dr. Octopus, but also gives us the first appearance of Gwen Stacy in the Ultimate Marvel Reading Order. And guys, let me tell you, Gwen Stacy is a very, very interesting character in Ultimate Marvel. You're gonna see in later videos, but for right now, she looks normal, but trust me, later on, it gets crazy with her character. But if you are new to my channel, basically every Monday, I upload one video on my channel because like I said, we are covering the Ultimate Marvel reading order. We have covered Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate X-Men, The Ultimate, and we also cover Ultimate Daredevil and Ultimate Elektra. Now guys, like I said, this is volume three of Ultimate Spider-Man. And guys, we pick up with number 14. Now guys, with this book right here, we are going to jump over the first few pages of this book. Because the thing is, guys, it's just Peter Parker in high school just doing high school stuff. It honestly does not matter. Instead, we're going to jump over to Dr. Octopus. Because right now, he's in a coma. Because, guys, back in Volume 1, by the way, I did cover that story. You, do have, oh, sorry, you, you did have Dr. Octopus help Norman Osborn with the Green Goblin experiment. The thing is, though... When Norman Osborn turned into the Green Goblin for the first time, the whole lab blew up, which put Dr. Octopus in a coma. And so right now, we're seeing him in a coma. The thing is though, you do have two doctors just basically watching over Dr. Octopus to make sure that he's okay. The thing is though, he does wake up for the first time in like two months. The problem is though, the two doctors, they have no clue how in the world they're going to tell, uh, tell him the fact that the four arms that he used to basically help Norman Osborn with the Green Goblin experiment is now fused to his body for a possibility of life. He now has four extra metal arms and they have no clue how in the world they're going to tell him this. Now, we do jump over to Peter Parker. Mary Jane, uh, Flash Thompson, Liz Allen, and Kong. And the thing is, guys, this part of the book right here, it's just them just outside of the school talking about their big school project. The thing is, though, this is the first appearance of Gwen Stacy. And the thing is, guys, the way Brian Michael Bendis uh, wrote about Gwen Stacy in this book, he had her more uh, as like a bad chick. Like this bad girl, you know, kind of like, I don't follow the rules. Matter of fact, I have been kicked out of not one, not two, but like three different schools. And Midtown is my last hope of finishing high school right now in the state of New York. And so like, Gwen Stacy is completely different than the main Marvel timeline. Like completely. She's a bad girl. She's a bad chick. She does not follow the rules at all. But thing is, guys, I want to sit down and say this is the first book that Gwen Stacy appeared in Ultimate Marvel. Now, to wrap up number 14, we do jump back over to Dr. Octopus talking to the two doctors. The thing is, though, guys, a third person does walk in, and this person is Hank Pym. Now, we did cover Ultimate Volume 1 on my channel, but thing is, though, guys, that story right there takes place way down the road after this story right here. And so technically, this is the first appearance of Hank Pym in the Ultimate Marvel reading order. This is his first appearance. And the thing is guys, you have Hank Pym just basically breaking it down to Dr. Octopus saying, hey, listen, you're in a coma for like two months. By the way, also your four metal arms that you used to help Norman Osborn with the Green Goblin experiment is now fused with your body for life. It's part of you forever. It will be there with you for a very, very long time. 
until we find a way to get them off of you. And the thing is, you do have our boy, Dr. Octopus, freak out and he kills every single doctor in that laboratory except Hank Pym. He's kind of like, listen, I want you to tell me where I'm at right now because I feel like you're also hiding other secrets about me. And the thing is, Hank Pym tells, uh, tells uh, Otto the fact that, yes, the world thinks you're dead. Like the world thinks you're dead. But in reality, we have been keeping you here to basically study you in those four metal arms. Now, we do jump over to Kong. Now guys, this part of the book right here is kind of Kong realizing something. Kong realized that every time Peter Parker disappears, Spider-Man appears. And so you have Kong kind of put two things together. He's kind of like, wait a second. Peter Parker, when he's gone, Spider-Man appears. Oh my God. He also got bit by a spider on our school field trip. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And that wraps up number 14 with Peter Parker possibly having a bigger problem to deal with, with Kong figuring out that he is Spider-Man. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate Spider-Man number 15, with this book right here guys, we do pick up with some random lady right now just working out in her own home. Now here's the thing right here though guys, She's at home doing one of those workout videos at home things. The thing is though, she does hear some kind of sound coming outside her house. She's kind of like, you know what? I'm okay, I'm inside, I should be safe. But then she hears more sounds, but this time it's coming from downstairs. She's kind of like, um, that's not good. Somebody broke into my home. now." Right before we jump over to the next scene of this book, we do see that somebody or something attacks her because she does scream really loud. And the thing is, right before we jump over to the next scene, we do see one of the four metal arms of Dr. Octopus. And it's kind of like, hey man, why in the world did you kill that woman for? That's the big question right there. Now. We do jump over to Kong and Flash Thompson because right now, guys, remember, at the end of number 14, Kong sat at home one day and put two things together. He's kind of like, wait a second, Peter Parker must be Spider-Man. And so right now, he's talking to Flash Thompson kind of like, hey, Flash, listen, um, Peter Parker is Spider-Man and we've been blind for the past couple weeks. Like, dude, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Matter of fact, you have Kong telling Liz Allen the same thing too. He's kind of like, hey, Liz, listen, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And the thing is, you have both Flash and Liz kind of like, dude, you're crazy. There's no way that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Like, there's no way. It's Peter Parker, man. There's no way. And so you have Kong kind of like, you know what? I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm gonna walk over there and show you guys that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And of course, when Kong goes over to kick Peter Parker from behind and hoping that Peter would do some kind of amazing trick, Peter doesn't do anything. He lets Kong kick him in the back and let Peter fall to the ground to say, hey, I'm not Spider-Man. I don't know why in the world you did that. I don't know why you think I am Spider-Man, but I'm not Spider-Man. And so guys, technically right now, in the crowd full of people in the hallways of this high school, it looks like Kong just bullied Peter Parker. Now, you do have Gwen Stacy come out of nowhere and she pulls a knife. Guys, Gwen Stacy pulls a knife on Kong. She's kind of like, what's wrong with you, man? Are you a bully? Dude, bullies are not cool. Like, you have Gwen Stacy just going off on Kong. Now, of course, you know, you do have one of the principals walk up and grab Gwen by her hand saying, listen, come to my office and we are calling your father right now because this right here 
is so not cool, Gwen. This is like your third school. You cannot afford to be kicked out right now, kind of thing. Now, we do jump over to the crime scene. Now guys, this crime scene is the house of that random lady that Dr. Octopus attacked earlier in this book right here. And thing is guys, we get introduced to Gwen Stacy's father. And right now, Mr. Stacy is just walking around, being a cop, trying to figure out what in the world happened at this crime scene. Why was this woman killed? Matter of fact, what killed her? Because her wounds do not look normal at all. And so right now, he's trying to be a detective. But of course, he does get a phone call from Midtown High, kind of like, hey man, um, listen, your daughter Gwen Stacy, yeah, her, she pulled a knife on somebody. That ain't cool, bro. Now, to go ahead and wrap up Ultimate Spider-Man number 15, as George Stacy's trying to wrap up this crime scene so he can go to Midtown High and get to his daughter, we do see that Ben Urich is right now trying to question Gwen, uh, sorry, Gwen Stacy's dad. You have Ben Urich kind of like, hey man, what happened here? Because this right here used to be the home of Dr. Octopus. Could it be that Dr. Octopus did not die in that accident with Norman Osborn? Now guys, remember, like I said earlier in this video, the doctors who were watching over Dr. Octopus, they told him, listen, the world believed that you are dead. Hank Pym told Octopus that, hey, listen, you are dead technically to the world, but you're still alive. We just told the world that you're dead. And so right now you have Ben Urich questioning George Stacy, the father of Gwen Stacy. Hey man, listen, is it true that um this could be Doc Ock, that he killed her? Because this is his old home. Like this is his old house right here. Could it be that this is Doc Ock? Now, we do jump over to the Daily Bugle. And guys, we do pick up again with Ben Urich. And thing is though, you do have Ben Urich talking to J. Jonah Jameson. And the thing is guys, this part right here is Ben Urich saying, listen, after Norman Osborn accident back in volume one, the world believed that almost every single person in that laboratory died except Norman Osborn that Doc Ock died in that accident. But in reality, he's alive. He's out there. He's out there. Some big time government program kept Doc Ock hidden. He's out there. You have Ben Urich trying to tell JJ, listen, we need to publish this story. We need to tell the world that the government or some kind of program that works with the government basically tried to hide Doc Ock from the world, saying he died, but in reality, he lived. And the thing is, Peter Parker overhears Ben Urich and JJ's conversation, and Peter's kind of like, crap. Like, crap. Doc Ock is back. The thing is though, Doc Ock played a key role with Norman Osborn turning into the Green Goblin, a key role when it comes to Peter Parker in that spider bite. And so Peter's kind of like, oh crap, Doc Ock is back. And Doc Ock could figure out that I'm Spider-Man. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate Spider-Man number 16, with this book right here, guys, we do pick up with Dr. Octopus just basically breaking into somebody's office. Now, here's the thing right here though, guys. We have no clue who this office belongs to. All we know is that Dr. Octopus is looking for somebody who owns this office. Now, we come to find out, guys, that basically Dr. Octopus has forgotten everything. Now, back in number 14, it was assumed that he only forgot what happened up to the experiment, like the day of the experiment. But we come to find out that he forgot everything that took place at Oscorp before Peter Parker. When he first joined Oscorp up to the experiment, he forgotten everything thanks to that explosion at the lab back in volume one. But the only thing he does remember is that whoever owns this office that he just broke into basically hired Dr. Octopus to go work for Norman Osborn to sabotage Oscorp. 
And the thing is, we still don't, we still have no idea who this office belongs to just yet. Now, we do jump over to the Daily Bugle. Now guys, this part right here, it does seem a tad bit minor, but it is really important because we do see the first appearance of Ultimate Marvel, Kraven. And the thing is, Kraven has been hired to come to New York to basically hunt Spider-Man. Now, guys, tell you the truth, all that right there took place in like one page. It was Marvel saying, hey, here's Kraven, He's on his way here to New York to find Spider-Man to hunt him down because he has a TV show that he is trying to basically make more money for. It all took place in like two pages. But the thing is though, we do jump over to Ben Urich. And the thing is guys, Ben Urich is trying to get a hold of George Stacy, the father of Gwen Stacy. Because right now, he wants more information about Dr. Octopus. But at the same time, Ben Yurich knows some things about Doc Ock that he can tell George Stacy to help George Stacy to figure out how to capture Doc Ock. Now we do pick up with Robbie, and the thing is, Robbie's trying to tell someone in the office of the Daily Bugle that he needs somebody to go down to Hammer Towers because it seemed like Dr. Octopus just broke into Hammer Towers. And guys, this gives us the answer on who this office belongs to. It belongs to Justin Hammer. And guys, this is our first appearance of Ultimate Marvel, Justin Hammer. And the thing is, Justin Hammer did something to Doc Ock. Or basically, Justin Hammer hired Doc Ock to sabotage Oscorp. Because Oscorp is Justin Hammer competition. And so, when Peter Parker heard Robbie ask somebody to go down to Hammer Towers because of Doc Ock, you have Peter Parker quickly change into Spider-Man to go see if he can find Doc Ock and bring Doc Ock down. The thing is though, when he gets there, Doc Ock is gone. Doc Ock has been gone for a good few minutes. And now it's just Justin Hammer and two random S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Well, one of the agents is called Agent Carter. But right now, it's just S.H.I.E.L.D. agents talking to Justin Hammer about what happened in his office. And basically, it's them going back and forth on, does he need S.H.I.E.L.D. protection from Doc Ock? And that's really it. But to go ahead and wrap up number 16, at the very last page, a plane does arrive into New York. And that plane is holding one person, guys. And I did say it earlier that he was coming into New York to hunt Spider-Man. But this one plane that lands in New York is Ultimate Craven. Craven has arrived in New York to find Spider-Man and to bring him down. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate Spider-Man number 17, with this book right here, guys, we are gonna pick up right in the middle of the book. Like right in the middle. And the reason why, because basically in the first 10 pages, nothing really big happens. Like nothing big really happens. Like you have Peter Parker talking to Aunt May about Craven arriving into New York. You have Craven talking to his manager about, hey man, listen, if you are able to kill off the Spider-Man, you're gonna bring in some big money. And that's really it. Oh, and also Gwen Stacy has been allowed back into school after pulling the knife on one of the kids there. And so that's really it in the first 10 pages. I'm not lying, that's it. But guys, we're gonna jump over to Justin Hammer. And the reason why, because this is a big moment right here. Because we pick up with Justin Hammer in his limo. And the thing is, he calls up one of his scientists. He's kinda like, hey man, listen. So, there's a guy out there named Dr. Octopus who wants to kill me. Like, he wants to murder me. I need one of our experiments to help me, to protect me, from Doc Ock. And so you, you have a scientist kind of like, oh, that's it? Well, listen, man, I do have one experiment, but in reality, it's still not ready yet. It's Flint Marco, AKA Sandman. We're still working the bugs out of him right now, but so far it does seem like he does have powers. And guys, this is our first 
appearance of Ultimate Marvel Sandman. And guys, we come to find out that Flint Marco went to Hammer for help to gain abilities and Hammer is kind of like, bam, here you are. You now have powers of sand. There you go. Guys, Justin Hammer made Sandman in Ultimate Marvel. This is our first appearance of Flint Marco in Ultimate Marvel. But the thing is, at this point right here, Flint Marco does not have full control of his powers yet. He's still learning how to control his powers. And so right now, he's basically just useless. Like, he has not been able to control his powers just yet. And so right now, you have the scientists say, uh, actually, he ain't ready. Yeah, luck, buddy. Like, he can't do anything for you. Like, you're screwed. I'm sorry. And it's kind of like, dang, man. Like, Hammer needs some kind of protection from Doc Ock. Now, we do jump over again to Hammer. But guys, we pick up at the dock somewhere in New York. Some kind of dock in New York. The thing is, though, Hammer is telling almost every big person in New York about his new project that he just finished that could end the energy crisis in the world. This big dome built in the middle of New York somewhere. Oh, actually, off the, like a little island somewhere in New York. But this dome can end the energy crisis in New York or possibility of the world. And so the thing is, though, as Hammer is talking to the crowd, and he has this big, huge, like, uh, presentation going on behind him saying like, hey, these two guys are going to show you around the laboratory. They're going to show you every single thing we did inside this dome so far that could end the energy crisis. The thing is, though, as the video stream is going on behind Hammer at this presentation, the crowd is watching Doc Ock murder every single scientist at that dome. And so while Hammer is going on like, yes, I can do this, I can do that. This dome is going to be amazing behind him on this live video stream of the dome. Inside the dome, Doc Ock is killing every single person inside that dome. Every single person. And it's kind of like, oh crap. Oh, oh crap. Like Hammer turns around, he's kind of like, oh crap. Doc Ock is inside my dome, killing my people. Now, to wrap up number 17, Peter Parker at his high school, he gets word that Doc Ock is attacking this dome because the school's all like, listen, we are on lockdown right now because there is a huge problem in New York right now, so we're on lockdown. And so Peter knows, oh crap, that's Doc Ock. I have to leave. He's like, Mary Jane, I need you to cover for me. I'll be right back. It's time for me to be a superhero. And so you have Spider-Man basically web sling all the way over to the dome. And he does crash land right in front of Doc Ock. And that is the end of Ultimate Spider-Man number 17. And guys, this is where we're going to end today's video. Because guys, this is an eight part story and we're already at almost 20 minutes long. Actually, I think we're already at 20 minutes long video. And so I'm going to end today's video right here. And next video, we'll cover the second half of this story. But please leave me a like down below. Also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, I'm out of here, and I'll see y'all in the next comic book video. Later, guys.